So, as I said the other day, you know, the MRI was encouraging. You know, there didn't appear to be anything um, dramatic in there. But the MRI doesn't always tell the story, and you really have to go on symptoms. So, um, yeah, he won't he won't play tonight or tomorrow, and, and uh, it's, we're still going to evaluate daily and, and uh, we'll see where it all goes but um, you know it's, it's it's frustrating for him just you know he's had such a great start to the year and, but again it's a, it's a new injury for, for him and we've got to make sure that he's fully fully healthy before we put him back out there would you um, is there any plan as far as getting him work Wednesday before Houston Steph yeah he's getting work every day okay. he's getting treatment every day so uh, you know we'll have the, the uh, day off on Wednesday. When, uh, it's a travel day, but uh, coming off a of back-to-back, so uh, we haven't determined yet. You know what's going to happen, but he won't play tomorrow night for sure. Right. Alfonso kind of overhauled his game when he was in the D League, becoming more of a perimeter guy, whereas he was more of an interior guy in college, and then like Summerhead and stuff like that. Well, just in general, what have you thought about the role the G League has played in terms of letting guys, you know, change their games and, and develop it in that way? Well, it's uh, it's been a great uh, <coughs> development for uh, the NBA. So many teams are using the G League uh, really efficiently. I think almost everybody now has an, has an affiliate. Or if, if not every team, it's close to every team. And, um, and so this is the best possible uh, s- scenario for young players to be able to go play, uh, get big minutes, work on your game, instead of just like the old days, just sitting around on the bench and, and uh, hardly practicing uh, with the, you know, with the, the NBA team, you go down and you play 30 plus minutes and, and develop in the G League. So you see what it's done for Damian and uh, you know some of our other guys who have been been through Santa Cruz. So, so I think it's fantastic. Have you gotten a chance to look at Evans' film from Not Santa yet. Cruz? Not yet. Yeah. Well, we have. Uh, We've got Luke Louts is, is with him constantly, so I get reports from from Luke, and, and uh, obviously we're monitoring uh, Marcus Derrickson and Damian closely. Damian's played really well down there, and, and uh, so it's been uh, yeah, it's been a really successful uh, endeavor for for us and for for a lot of teams. Obviously, Draymond's value is well established, but when he was out, were there any things you learned about? younger guys as far as them trying to hold it down? Um, not really. I mean, I, I think, you know, we, we, we've we learned a lot about DJ over the last month, you know, in a couple months. Um, so it didn't take Draymond's injury to see what DJ was doing for us. And, uh, you know, Jordan, it's in his second year, he played ball. A lot of minutes in the finals last year, so we, we already know what our young guys can do. You got, I think, five games, uh, seven days this week, two back to backs. Are you are you planning rest at all for different guys, especially during this um, We will do it accordingly. You know, we'll just kind of play it by ear. Um, so no plans yet. We're just kind of going to see how everybody's doing from one day to the next. But uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's good to have Sean and, and Andre back tonight. And, Take it, take it day by day. From there. I said Andre. I meant. To, did I say Andre? You said Sean Andre, and Draymond. But yeah, yeah. I kind of include Andre. <laughs> 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 um, Clay's had four straight games where he's had 20 or more points. Yeah. reaching that level of consistency and being the Iron Man. That's that's Clay. I mean, it, for whatever reason, uh, you know, the last few years, several times he's gotten off to very slow starts over the first five or six games, and then. He just took off from there, but this is uh, this is the clay that we've seen, you know, for the last five years that I've seen in the last five years, uh, night in and night out, um, defending the opponent's ball handler, um, dogging that person everywhere, all over the floor, uh, using his size and his strength to bother people at the defensive end, and then using that same size to shoot over people on offense. So. Guys, uh, he's a machine. It's amazing uh, just how consistent play is. Right? And, uh, he seems like he loves being a California kid too. Defines him. Do you see an extra bounce in his step in this? I think 
think there's an extra bounce in everybody's step when you come to LA. Um, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to translate to the court. Uh, <laughs> everybody loves coming here, uh, so hopefully it'll translate. Uh, we've seen a few games over the last uh, last few years that uh, we've looked a little sluggish, um, but uh, we can't have that happen tonight. The Clippers are really a good team. They play hard. Uh, they play together. They've got a they've got a good vibe. You can see it. Um, they've got good energy and. And uh, good chemistry, and uh, it's gonna be a tough game. What do you tell Damian and some of your other young centers about Garden Boban? He seems like he's one of the more unique. Matches. Yeah, he is. He is. I mean, it's uh, you know you gotta try your best to uh, to challenge his shot when he gets the ball uh, down low, but it's almost impossible. You gotta try to do your work early um, and keep him out of the restricted area. Uh, but he's got a nice touch, and uh, you know he can catch the ball at the foul line or on the elbows and make a shot. And, um, very unique player, very skilled. Have you found, you know, in your past the times you've played him, that your centers? Uh, it just seems weird to me. Guys that live their life so big go out there and they're towered over. I mean, yeah. how weird have you seen you know, that matchup? Uh, yeah, I remember last year when we played in Detroit and uh, David West was out there, um, and he just looked like a child. And David is you know, <laughs> one of the most intimidating figures you'll, you'll ever see. I mean, jumping up, like six nine, and just you know, rock solid strength, and and yeah, he's uh, Boban is like a foot taller than him. It's crazy. Along the fouling team, what do you tell guys like Damian Jordan on handling Blue, just given what he does? Yeah, I mean, uh, with Lou, you you got to understand what's coming. You know, he's gonna he's gonna force a lot of contact and put you in really uh, awkward situations. He's one of the best in the league at that. So uh, you can't get your hands caught in the cookie jar. That's uh, you know you got to show your hands and, and uh, make him earn his points. As soon as you start reaching in, uh, you're in big trouble. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, I had a couple extra questions.